Welcome to Rick Drayson Live. I am indeed your host, Rick Drayson. I'm here today with a guest of mine who, oh, how do I tell you about this guy? He's an amazing man. He does a lot of things on KNBC. He's a comic. He's a well-versed person in probably everything you want to talk about. But the main thing he does is the NBC Channel 4 weatherman. And he is the man who is my friend, and he always makes sure that there's sun over my head on cloudy days. And it's my honor to have here Fritz Coleman. Thank you, Fritz, for being here. I'm happy to be here. Thanks Boy, for inviting me. I, I want to thank you, first of all, for giving me good weather all the time. Yes. And it's only over my house. But you got to wear sunblock on your head. I do. I do. Either that or a nice cap. <laughs> But you have an interesting life. You know, I, I read up about you. I've known you for a few years now. You're also the honorary mayor of Tuluka Lake, am I right? Right, which means absolutely nothing. <laughs> My only responsibility is that on the first Friday of December, yes. I light the six-foot Christmas tree in front of Ramsey Schilling Real Estate. I'm done for the rest of the yeah, year. Yeah, but that's a nice thing. It is. It's it a is beautiful like, parade. It's right, right. I have about as much power as Paul, the king of big screen. That's it. That's it. <laughs> All right. So you grew up in, in Philly. Right. And uh, you went to college in West Virginia to study radio, TV, and film. Right. Did you know at a young age this is what you wanted to do, or did you have aspirations no. of doing something else? I totally backed into my weather job through my comedy. I in 1982, that. I was a staff performer at the comedy store here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And my boss and his wife were in the audience, my then boss. And I performed and talked in my presentation about having been in the Navy, and I did the weather in the Navy against my will. I didn't know anything about it, but the superiors needed somebody to do the presentation. I didn't know anything about meteorology, but it's all communication. Isn't, that how, that, isn't that how things happen? Yes. Now? It's just presentation. It doesn't matter whether the science is right. Just keep moving. Exactly. So, so I did it, and after this is a true story. And so after the show, he and his wife came backstage to introduce themselves. He said, I know this is a really weird question. Uh, but do you have any interest in doing some vacation relief? Work for me on Channel 4. I have a weekday weatherman who hasn't had a vacation in a year. I need somebody to help me on weekends. Do you have any uh, desire to help me out? And I was making $45 a night at the comedy store. I said, sir, when do you want me to start? Absolutely. And so I had to audition. I, uh, I did vacation relief for about two years, and then my predecessor left, and I was bumped up to the weekday weather person mm -hmm. five six and eleven o'clock and mm -hmm. i've been there 32 years you've so, been there that long yeah you know that's actually a blessing to get an offer like that oh my god how many people get that i offer? was afraid that i ran out of all my luck at one fell swoop it's one of those classic <laughs> hollywood stores it's like the woman in schwab's pharmacy who yes. just was there at the right place at the right time yes i every day i'm astonished at the good luck i've had yeah and the fact that i'm still employed with gray hair <laughs> and without a shapely body i'm still employed with no hair i can imagine Unbelievable. That. i actually got more employment when i shave my hair. let me ask you a question yes are you doing this for my benefit because i feel like i'm standing here in front of these pictures i'm somebody with an eating disorder no I'm oh trying, they can't see i'm that. trying to motivate you oh my gosh you you were you were a house um, you were a, I was a an apartment small building. I was an apartment building. <laughs> you, I mean, I'm, I, I, oh my gosh. Oh my God. And well, you know, it's, it's where I started. And, it, and it's, I, I had just done a documentary on the Olympic Auditorium with Gene LaBelle yesterday because it, the Olympic Auditorium has a lot of history. Those were the days, wrestling and boxing. Yeah, and Dick Lane right. and Jimmy Lennon. Right. And someone said to me at the finish, and this is about you, not about me, but I just want to say that I told the people at the end of the, the documentary interview that the Olympic Auditorium gave me my career, just as you. They put me on TV twice a week here in L.A., and from TV I started doing film, and I started doing commercials, and things just unraveled. And had I never wrestled at the Olympic Auditorium, this never would have happened. Just like with you. But I, but I love to watch people react to you, because you and I ha share an office, which is Starbucks. Yes, we do. Because that's the only place we can get anything done. Rent free. Rent, rent free, <laughs> right. But I love to see people come up and talk to you. I mean, young people and old people yes. that remember your reputation from the wrestling world yes. and how you uh, deal with them. That's why it was easy to be your friend, because you have great advice for people and you have a great reputation. I like people. Yeah. And I like to help people. Yeah. So it's, it's fun for me. But you don't have a degree in, in the meteorology. No. You just present the no. weather. I, I, you know, my job as a television weatherman isn't about science. My job is to make science as um, easy to understand as possible because people don't want to know about high pressure and isobars and low pressure. And but you learned it. You, uh, on, on the job training. Yeah. But all people really want to know is 
for the love of God, please just tell me, should I give my daughter a raincoat for school tomorrow or not? Or send her out with her Hello Kitty raincoat? That's all I want to know. I don't want to know about isobars and occluded fronts. Please just tell me yes. if it's going to rain tomorrow. That's all real. People just want practical information. So I take the science, which is done by geniuses from the National Weather Service, who right. are wonderful, and they do all the weather, and I just make it into a presentation that's easy to watch to keep people from hitting the clicker and going somewhere else with an attractive woman delivering the weather, who is much I more pleasant know, to no. look at I than I do. I think you're much more pleasant than an attractive woman. You know, you know what I mean? I'm used to you and I like it. Anyway, but, but, but that's what it, it is. My job is communication and not science. But doesn't it, doesn't it create the audience? Sometimes they take the bad weather out on the weatherman. It's oh, yeah. your fault that it's, that it's raining you're today. You're in there when, that, when I get hammered for this. I know. That's what you and I have in common. For instance, it's hot now, so I'll get body slammed when I go to work today. <laughs> Um, uh, but it's, it's, it's really interesting to have people react to the weather because they think I control it. Of course they do. And I get, I get in trouble for bad weather, but I never get credit for the good weather. Nobody comes up and says, thank you for 78 and sunny. Yeah. I have another question because okay. I watch the news every day and, and there's a million things going on in this world that are really bad, especially mm -hmm. right now. And they, they give you the lead-ins to the bad stuff. But first, the weather. Right. It's the most important thing of the day. That's a good observation. And, and then it's every three minutes. That's right. It's going to be hot today. That's right. And it's going to be hot. Right. And you better watch out because it's going to be hot. My job is to tell them information that they would know on their own if they just took the time to look out the window. Right. But the people don't do that. No, they, it's but good my, to hear it. I've often, but, but what you say is absolutely true. My position in the newscast, my job in the news is to be the palate cleanser between the tragedy and the sports. Right. I just kind of let them down easy. <laughs> <laughs> After they've been given no reason to continue living, yes. to settle down, then give them the scores. Do you ever give it. them light at the end of the tunnel, like towards the end of the week it's going to be okay? That, I, I try to always have a positive spin in the third act. Okay. I always try to do that, seriously. And when you get to the epilogue. But that's, that's a very of... <laughs> interesting point you bring up because news today, especially the world we're living in, yes. is really weighty and tragic. And if you watch a lot of it and let it get to your soul, it, it, it really is bad. So honestly... I come on and I'm a non-threatening part of the newscast unless right. there's a quarter of an inch of rain. Right. And so that's an interesting sort of a side responsibility. Just people can take a deep breath and know they're not going to be assaulted. Well, because it's a personal thing. You're living in the city where they live and they want to have something good happening. And outside the world, these bad things are happening, but they're not really a part of it. They just hear about it. Right. So by you giving them the news, what's going on locally, they almost feel, oh, my God, it's going to be okay. No, that's right. that's exactly right. That's a great option. But I have to tell you, because of, of you and because of the weather, after 36 years in my house, yesterday I had central air put in. I'm going to have a cool summer. <laughs> and where you live, I can't believe you existed as long as you did. Uh, this is what my girlfriend said. How do you live in this office? It's 95 degrees in here. Right. Well, now it won't be. And you have students in your backyard, and you're in one of the hottest parts of the valley. It's yep. 115 degrees, and you're making these kids do... Early on Saturday mornings before it gets really hot. Oh, okay. Hot. Um, you did radio too, a disc right, jockey. Right. Tell me about that. I was, uh, I was uh, in radio for 15 years. I started in the Navy. I was in the Navy for four years and I worked for Armed Forces Radio and Television. Right. And so that's where I got my training. Did they tell you you had a good face for radio? That's right. <laughs> that's exactly right. I felt very comfortable in radio. Yeah. But the beautiful thing about learning your career in the military is regardless of how bad you are, mm -hmm. you never get fired. No, no, you're going to... They uh, keep mm -hmm. you in that billet... Yeah. until you, they're done with you yeah. and throw you out in four years. And it was a gift to be in a situation where I didn't have to worry about being fired. Well, no, even after four years, they want you to renew. No, that's yeah. right. They want you back again. <laughs> so I did that. I was, I was a DJ. I was a talk show host. I was a production director, a music director. I did everything in radio. Yeah. And then uh, I, w when you were in radio back when I was in radio in the 70s, 60s and 70s, right. you would always get invited to host clubs and I always got invited to host at a local jazz club when I worked in Buffalo, New York. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started stand up. I began to write material as the MC for these jazz nights and then my block of material began to expand and I really fell in love with it and decided to come out here and try. That's that's exactly how I got into comedy. When you do comedy because I don't, I like I've been told for years and years, you know, Rick, you're really a funny guy from wrestling. You should do stand up. And I and I really would like to go that route. I'm not sure where to touch on it, but I do have, I can get up and talk for 20 minutes and be funny. I know I can. I've heard this from millions of people. And of course, everybody says, oh, you know what? I should be a stand-up comedian, or I should be a restaurant. I know everything takes work. I'm willing to work at it. But the thing is, how do you know where to even begin to do that? What do you, what do you write your format after? You have an idea, and then you have to have a format. Well, I'm an show. observational comedian. But, but, but see, you have a great hook. 
uh, uh, and that is your experience as a wrestler. And you have irony working in your favor. You're a tough guy. People don't expect you to be funny and smart. True. So there's irony in your presentation. So True. you could write to that. Exactly. People expect you to come out, and if you don't get what you want, you put somebody in a headlock and drop I can them. go even one step farther. I was raised in Bakersfield as a country Jew. And at my bar wow. mitzvah is when I realized I wanted to be a wrestler. Holy. I looked at the congregation. I was wearing the tallest with the stripes and this guy with the stripes. And I Did said, you ever meet Merle Haggard? Of course. See, Merle's mm -hmm. from Bakersfield. Man, that's the Bakersfield sound up there. Of course it is. And Buck Owens. Wow. And Buddy Owens was a bass player in my, in my band when the I played Buckaroos, guitar. The Buckaroos. The yeah. Buckaroos. Yeah. Wow. So there's a million rules. I like you more now than I did when I walked in here. <laughs> There's a million ways to go with it, but when you're in Starbucks and you're making notes and all that, are you doing your comedy? Yes. I figured that. I can't get it done at work because the phone doesn't ever Yeah, I understand that. I do it now. I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have this regular job, and I have three kids, right. and I have lots of debt. But the comedy I can do on my own outside the building, and it's just good for my soul. It's just... I do it because I love to do it. I've been doing it for 30 years, and I'm writing a new show now about being over 50. Mm -hmm. I call it a baby boomer support group, <laughs> and uh, and I'm having fun. I'll never stop doing that because I get a lot of satisfaction out of it. And you know how it is. Working in front of a live audience is, uh, when everything is working as it's supposed to, yes. is a gift. It's yes, so it much is. fun. When you, when you work in front of a live audience, like within wrestling, I explained to you, we would call it as we go. I mean, I do, because I want to feel the audience where they're going, right. and you take them on a journey. Right. And so you get them up, and you get them down. You bring them where you want to take them. If you pattern, and now this, this is different with you, of course, or maybe it's not. When you pattern every move in wrestling, if you forget your place, it's like a dance. It's, oh, I missed my step. Where do I go now? So you have to be able to pick it up. Improvise. With yeah. comedy, you have to do basically the same thing, don't you? You do. Uh, you said a couple of true things about stand-up. That is, you have to read the audience and know where you're going, about content, about language, about any, any, any sort of, you take the temperature of the audience when you first go out there. Right. But sometimes uh, you have to improvise. You have hecklers and all those things. And, and the gift of doing stand-up for 35 years is there's nothing that happens to me on television during the news that can throw me anymore. Computers die. It's live TV. You never know what's going to happen. Right. So if it goes down, you know, that's... Uh, to me, that's a gold mine. I just love doing that. Um, when you deal with hecklers, how do you handle that? Well, you have to handle it gently because there's a real interesting power thing that happens. You know, you, you are the person with the power because you have the microphone. Right. So if you have a heckler, but you hit him over the head with a sledgehammer verbally, then the audience stops being your friend and they support the heckler right. because you're the guy with the power. So what you have to do is kind of bring him along and give him enough rope to hang himself. Right. Because if you get the audience against you, then you can't get them back. But if you do it gently and with smarts and uh, respecting the power that you have being on stage with the spotlight and the microphone, then you own the audience if you can do it well. Well, believe it or not, we have two minutes left. You know how fast that went? It was a lot of fun, my friend. We're not, we're not done yet. Long. Okay. We're not done yet. I want to know now, you're still a young man. That's not true, but thank you. Compared to me, you are. <laughs> <laughs> and where would you like to take your career now? How much longer would you want to do the weather? How far do you want to take the comedy? I mean, there's no end in sight in some things. No. Uh, I, well, that's something that I think about every day. I, I, I will tell you that the television news business is changing like other forms of communication. Right. And it's, it's a youth-oriented business. I mean, the target demographic in television broadcast TV is 18 to 34. Right. And I, I've exceeded that. <laughs> demographic by a couple of decades yeah yeah so i know that if i i have a contract for a couple more years i i'm i i have had a wonderful career that'll be 34 35 years for me i'm writing this new show now the stage show about being over 50 and uh I, what i'd like to do is keep working on this i have about another year's worth of work and if I could take it around and play small and medium-sized theaters around the United States when I retire, yes. just to break even. I don't even care if I make a whole lot of money. Yes. Just for the joy of performing it, that would be my goal right that now. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And you can use the weather as a platform to, to, I mean, everybody knows you, so it's not like you're coming in cold. No. So it's, it's no. a good platform to move ahead. No. It's, uh, it's been a gift. The whole, I, I've been beyond lucky in my life. Beyond lucky. Well, I want to come see you next time you're around. you got to come. I, I will, but you have to let me know when. I'll introduce you from the audience. And uh, okay. you'll stand up with your imposing figure. And, and take a bow. There you go. Uh, I have, to, at the end of every show, I like to give people a tip. And um, I'd like you to give the tip this, this time. Okay. And you can give a tip on doing comedy, or you can give a tip on doing the weather, or you can give a tip on anything you think the, the, the world might want to know about. Let's put the ball okay. in the court. 
All right, that's okay. Well, I know a lot. I know a lot of young people uh, look to you for advice about career. They're I mean, not only wrestling kids, but yeah. you have like that superhero status in the wrestling world where and bodybuilding and nutrition. Yeah, and, and the equalizer, and you created a character, and right. kids look up to the character for. Yes. Well, you probably agree with this. Just don't stop trying to fulfill your dream. Exactly. What I mean is, I, I, in my, from my personal experience, I've had uh, a, a wonderful career, career in weather, but stand-up is hard to learn and get good at, so I'll never give it up. And even though I have no delusions about being Chris Rock or Louis C.K. or any of these guys, yes. in my own universe, I'm just trying to be as good as I can do to continue to do what I love to do and would do for free. Absolutely. Just It's just do whatever your passion is that gives you a reason to get out of bed in the morning, and don't stop doing it. I totally agree with you. Where can people reach you if they want to find you on the internet? And well, uh, you can. I, I have my own website, fritzcoleman.com. Okay. I have my own YouTube channel with clips from the comedy. Oh, awesome. If you don't permit me a plug, only because it's for Please. nonprofit work. I'm at the Ice House uh, once a month. They give me my own evening on Sunday nights, and uh, I don't know the exact night, but you can go to the Ice House in Pasadena. It's a legendary comedy club. It's been open for 50 years. George Lopez and I started yes. his house MCs there. Uh, you can go there and uh, a Sunday in August and a Sunday in September. I'm doing a nonprofit night there. Come and see the show and we 100% give the money to charity. The one in August is for the San Fernando Valley Rescue Mission that just burned down. We're mm -hmm. going to give them some money. And the one in September is for Casa Las Amigas, which is a drug rehab place for women. And we give 100% of the proceeds and you'll have big laughs and I have other acts on the bill. It's fun. I'm coming. I love it. Come on. I want to thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. You've, you've, since day one, you've been a good friend. And I, I, and I enjoy really talking that. to you, and, I, and my fun is to watch people react to you. You, you <laughs> hold court in there, and people come up and get advice from you. You're the best. Thank Thanks, you. This right? happens everywhere I go. Thank you so much for watching Rick Drayson Live. Thank you, Fritz Coleman, for being here. Stay tuned. Next time, I'll have another guest, and I enjoy you people, and thanks for being our fans and our audience. See you next time. Talking too much? No, 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 no. That was really interesting. Very good. Oh, good. Yep. We're gonna... Did you get to see it? Oh, yeah. Hey, how are you? I was, I was two minutes late because they didn't let me in. So you saw the monitor? <laughs> just like, just like Broadway. They...